This is a demonstration video of a borescope technique of a cylinder. I'm going to insert, we're not going to 90 degree camera here, I'm going to insert it in the lower borescope, or a lower spark plug hole, and we're going to look at the top hole here, and we're going to determine the bottom end of the helicoil to make sure it's not protruding into the combustion chamber. And we're looking at it to also see that we don't have any cracks running out the periphery area here that are radial from the center point of the bore. We don't see any here. Then we take a quick glance of the intake valve and note that it's complete. There's no cracks or chips on it. The seat's complete in the head. And we look at the exhaust valve and comment on is the debris pattern uniform or is it oblong? Has it got hot spots or say discontinuities in it where it's not uniform around its perimeter and you know if you see areas like uh, the flecking that's here that's dark and light that it's uniform around the perimeter. Oftentimes it's a subtle thing to see when change starts to happen on this and if we're proactive and looking at this and commenting what we're seeing uh, we can make an accurate future assessment if we're going to bore scope again in 50 hours and make suggestions like perhaps we need to do a valve lapping or something like that because the valve is warped or the guide is worn or something like that. So we're going to then go further in at this point, or excuse me, we're going to pull out and we're going to look at the bottom area. We're going to look for oil content in the cylinder where the spark plug is here and we're going to look at that and make sure A, is the helicoil properly placed so it's not stuffed into the combustion chamber and that there's no radial cracking or any other type of cracking here in the casting area and particularly around the spark plug bore. And we're going to look in the cylinder wall, look for proper cross hatch and we're going to look for things like this scoring if you will, the discoloration that's there that can be the ring end gap or the wrist pin rub on the cylinder wall. And cylinder wall rubs at 9 and 3 o'clock position are wrist pin rubs. So they transfer aluminum from the pin cap on a normally aspirated engine. Bronze sort of look on, bronzy brass look on the turbo engines of the Continental 550 family. You'll see what's here it looks like corrosion, but that's actually varnish that's in the cross hatch area. That's not to a concern. It does not affect any of the functionality of the cylinder. The compression's on the cylinder. The master orifice was 48. The compression on this cylinder was 60, 476 out of 80. We're going to continue to look at that board and say, okay, is it uniform or not? We're seeing the top of the piston here in great shape. And oh, what's that little scratch mark in the top of the piston? That is from, that was that little gray mark. That is from the borescope touching the top of the piston. Nothing to be concerned about. Let's see if we can reshow this again. We'll often see the part number. We see different debris patterns on the pistons. And that's oil and carbon and all sorts of combustion debris that's just condensed. And that's a scratch from the end of the borescope, just touching the piston. Now for the carbon buildup that's there, combustion debris. Now we come back and we'll take a look, we'll watch the valves move. We want to see that they go back into the seats nicely. So we're going to just observe which one moves first, between the intake and the exhaust. Now we're seeing the exhaust valve close. We're going to go through a full rotation cycle here at least. And we're going to look for side to side motion as the valve comes in the seat. See right at the very trail end of the valve coming into the seat, there was just a little bit of movement off to one side. And that's called luxation. And that's an indicator of the valve displacing itself to re and centering on the seat. The seat is obviously fixed and the valve is mo motion there. The seat is that crescent between the valve and the cylinder head. Now we're going to watch the valve here further move and rotate the prop backwards so I don't hear the impulse coupling smack. Now we see the intake valve opening up. Intake valve opens up. We're looking at the stem here and we see the stem exit of the valve guide and we see that there's very little oil 
that's built up there. There's a little bit of varnish on the valve guide, uh, the valve itself, and there's no oil leaking. This is a low, low pressure area, and what we see, would see is oil being sucked into this upper intake area. If that seal was bad or the guide was badly worn, we'll see at times see that there's a bunch of debris in the back side of the valve, venturi here, and a debrised up combustion byproduct, coked oil and such like that that's on the back side. We see here the seat contact area, ring, matches the valve and cleanliness. Very nice, there's no debris. The valve runs cool because there's cold air behind it. We're going to watch this valve come into place here, come back in the seat. And there's minimal luxation and that seat is tight in the head. Oftentimes we'll see, oftentimes, it does happen that you can see the seat actually squish out oil or have some relative motion to the cylinder head as the valve closes and puts pressure on it. If it does that, it's in danger of falling out of the head in operation. And if it does that, it basically horseshoes the intake valve, and the intake valve won't close, and then the intake valve hits the piston, creating a massive amount of damage, and it certainly runs rough. Now I've got the exhaust valve opening up here. We're going to look down this guide point here, and you saw some motion down there, and that's oil on the exhaust valve. We've got a oil ports that squirt on the exhaust side. They squirt oil onto the stem spring area to kelp, to cool it and lubricate it. And we see this is a low pressure, there's a vacuum on this, and it will also suck oil into the exhaust chamber side of the combustion head here, then it gets burned. Now it's a lot hotter, so there's a lot more motion that's there, and dimensional sloppiness, so you get more debris coming into the combustion chamber, or it gets blown into the valve cover area and it gets washed down into the push rod tube housing. Now we're going to take a look here and see what sets look like. It's like, oh, the contact area of this exhaust valve, very uniform. We see some debris speckling on it, no problem at all. There's combustion debris. It condenses on that cold area, which is the valve seat. Then we see here the valve transfer that heat to the, the valve transfer that heat to the seat and that should be nice and uniform look around it. Sometimes we'll see flecking in like a tortoise pattern there, but that's that's normal. And of course it depends if the engine been run excessively rich or excessively cold, things like that, and then the debris combustion debris builds on it. So we're looking at here is the valve going back in the seat. We're looking for that luxation or movement of it. You see there's a little bit of luxation and there's no the relative motion of the seat to the head, but we see that there's some motion that's here. A little left to right action that's there. It's not very uniform. Okay, so that completes the borescope inspection survey of a cylinder.